Now, in your example, as a new manager, I think a lot of our listeners, as they move from IC to management, they want to make an impact. But what's often the case is there's culture and norms that they're now working against. So whether that's their previous manager or how this information has been perceived or reacted to in the past has created an unsafe environment. And then you come in there and you're like, great, I have the ask approach. I'm ready to go. I want to get in there and make everyone feel safe. But there's all this history of in past meetings and past situations where they weren't safe. How do we create a reset so that people know now we really can feel safe? No matter what happened in the past, I recognize that I was reactive. I understand that previously the culture maybe wasn't as receptive to what you had to share in difficult conversations. How do we hit that reset button so that people can feel safe moving forward? In some ways, I think the way that you just asked the question points the way to the answer as well, which is to actually discuss it and name it. And so if, you know, and I think this is part of the opening up strategy of make it safe, which is I'm going to open up about how, how our culture has been before. I'm going to put that on the table. I'm going to make that discussable. I might even ask a question and say, has that been your perception too? I might even ask a question and say, given our history and our culture, what would make it more safe for you? Is What could I be doing as a leader in order to be able to you know, create a different kind of atmosphere in this conversation. And so take what was in my own unspoken observation and put that out there, make it discussable, and then add a question to it. Yeah, I think that allows everyone to then recognize that in calling out the unsaid, they can start to share what they've been holding back on and what they've been withholding in these conversations to feel safer to share the unsaid. All right, step three. Yeah, so step three is what I call pose quality questions. And my definition of a quality question is very simple. It is a question that helps us learn something important from someone else. Um, and I distinguish this from crummy questions because a lot of us may, you know, utter words with question marks and we think we're asking a question, but it's not really a high quality question. Maybe it's a sneaky question that's trying to you know, lead someone to our point of view by saying, don't you think we should do this? Or wouldn't it be great if we could do this? Or you know, all those kinds of things. There's a whole bunch of crummy questions. A quality question really helps us learn something from someone else. And I think of quality questions almost the way that I think a surgeon would think about their precision tools. I want this scalpel for this purpose. I want this for this. For, depending on what we're trying to learn, we can use different quality questions. And I'll come back to the one that you shared earlier, which is request reactions. What is your reaction to what I have to say? Um, and just you know, one short story about that. Also, when I was a new manager, I was taught this question. And I was taught it's a good idea to ask someone what their reactions are after you give them some direction or some guidance. And so I was managing someone and I had, I thought I had done a great job giving him some guidance and direction. I said, what are you, you know, just, just to check, what's your reaction to what I just said? And he said, honestly, if you really want to know, I found it totally demoralizing. And I was floored because I thought I was doing well, being a good manager. But had I not asked that question, he would have walked away completely deflated. We would not have had the kind of results and performance, but because I asked that, I was able to discover that. We were able to trace back what was our disconnect. It turned out that I knew something about our client that I was trying to solve for that he ha he wasn't aware of. Once I shared that information, we got on the same page. We were you know we were we were good, but just that just that simple question was a game changer for me. So that's one category of quality questions. I think another category of quality questions that is often uh, underutilized is inviting ideas. Simply to say, hey, I've got this dilemma. What would you do here? Do you have any ideas for me? How might we solve for this concern that we have? And this is where people have the most amazing ideas and they aren't going to share them unless they're invited to share them. But when they do, like that can change the entire direction of a discussion or a strategy or et cetera. So that would be a second. And I'll just give you one other kind of sequence of quality questions that I think is very powerful, which starts with what I call hear their headline. It's so amazing when that people how often people don't actually tell us their headline view. Like I actually disagree with this strategy, or I actually think this is the wrong way to go, or the right way to go, etc. So here, their headline is just simply saying questions like, "What do you think about X? Where do you come down on this? What would you do in this situation?" But then you can't stop there. Then there's another set of questions that I call "Dig deeper," and "Dig deeper" is really about where does that come from. What makes you think that? Can you walk me through your thought process? How did you get there? What are the concerns and values that, that, are, that are making you worried about this or want to do this? And then there's one more step to go, which is what I call see what they see. Because their reasons aren't coming from nowhere. Their reasons are coming from information and experiences they had. So see what they see could literally be just to say, what are some examples of when you've had you know, when that concern has come up? Or you know, what information are you basing that on? Or can you tell me a story about that? 
and and sometimes when we say what information, people get intimidated because they think, well, if I don't have it all buttoned up on a PowerPoint slide, I can't give my data. But the truth is that lived experience is also data. And so, you, so by saying, you know, tell tell me a story of when you've encountered that issue, that's another way to get information from people. Mm-hmm. 